Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tomasz and today we will talk about five fundamental actions in ballroom dancing. So let's start with just naming the five fundamental actions. So it's progression, lowering, rising, turning or rotating and swaying. Now why those five are the fundamental actions? Because any figure in ballroom dancing is created or designed with those five actions. And now some of them, like for example in tango, uh, don't have rise and fall or sway. Some of them have all of them and some of them have only selected few. But uh, it's important to know that all the figures we have are created on base of those five actions. Those five actions we can categorize into two groups, body actions and leg actions. Now, we will use the chair to determine which ones are body actions and which ones are leg actions. Let's see which ones we can do on the chair, which will show us whether we need to use our legs or our body. So now you can clearly see that I can easily rotate my body, I can easily sway my body, but progression might be very difficult without moving the chair. So I could, I could move it like that. Also notice that without using my legs, rise and fall is impossible. Of course, the correct one, we are not counting artificial rise and fall that we create through our posture. So, please remember that progression, rise and lowering are the leg actions and body rotation and sway are the body actions. The first action we will talk about is progression. Now, progression is pretty much the most fundamental action in ballroom dancing. Why? Because without progression, we cannot pretty much execute the vast majority of figures. The only figures that don't have progression inside of them are the line figures and only to finish off the shape, not even to enter or exit. The ballroom dancing in general started with just us dancing and walking around the floor. We don't have to lower, we don't have to rise in the basic form, we don't have to really sway, but we do have to move around the floor in a couple and in a second we will talk about that we do have to create some turns in order to connect figures together. When we talk about progression, we have to uh, agree that there are only three directions we can take. It's either a forward step, a side step or a backward step. Of course, when we add the turn into it, it might change the feet alignment, might be in promenade, might be in outside partner position, but pretty much we have only three options when we talk about basic uh, progression without any other layer attached to it. The second action that is, I would say, a must in pretty much every figure in ballroom dancing is turn and rotation. Now, why turn and rotation? It's two different things. Uh, generally, let's categorize rotation as your body turning without your feet moving and turn when we have to actually turn as a couple and change direction. Uh, those are two different things requiring two different skills. As we mentioned before, rotation is a body action, which means we do not have to move our feet in order to do it, right? I can freely turn my shoulders around my spine, right? And keep my feet stable at the same time. I will just mention that the maximum rotation we can achieve individually is the one that doesn't turn our feet. So notice that there will be a moment that I will have to start turning on my feet to continue turning my body. And I would say that it's not my personal maximum, that's just bad rotation. Also, please notice that rotation is only around the spine. We don't have to add the sway or any other misalignment of the spine to do rotation. So notice my spine is exactly vertical to the floor and I'm just rotating around it. Second option of the body rotation is a foot swivel. Now, we don't have to move across the floor to swivel our feet. That's why it's so important to understand the foot swivel, especially when it comes to changing the body position, for example, to promenades or outsides. When we swivel the feet, it's very important to notice that now my shoulders are a fixed point 
and I can turn my feet on the, on the ball of the feet uh, separately from my upper body. Now, notice that my hips will turn slightly with the feet, but only as much as they need to. There's only a certain amount of foot swivel I can apply without moving my hips at all. Now, if I want to swivel more, naturally my hips will follow, uh, but again, only as much as they need to. So that was body rotation. Now let's go to the turn. Now, very briefly, when we turn as a couple, pretty much everything turns. So if I dance, for example, a natural turn, the second step, I will turn my feet, I will turn my shoulders, I will turn my hips, and the whole couple will turn. We will create a whole separate video on the body rotation and turning, so there we will go more in depth of how to do it exactly. The third action is lowering, which you can check out already because we made a video about lowering, it will be in the description below. What you have to know about lowering, that it is a leg action that should not change your posture at all. So again, I should coordinate my knees and ankles and hips in order not to disturb the posture, but lower the whole body down. Fourth action is rise. Now, when we rise, we usually use our feet, but in ballroom dancing, we can talk about two different rises. Now, one will be a feet rise, one will be a body rise. When we talk about the feet rise, like again, we said, very simple, it's when we use our ankle joints to move the whole body up without changing anything else in my body. Now, when we talk about the body rise, is literally just straightening action of our knees. So when I will be sideways, if I lower, now the body rise will be straightening or almost straightening my knees, that will be my body rise. Now the foot rise would be when I'm actually getting on the toes to the maximum height I can get. Usually in most of the dances we use body rise and feet rise. In foxtrot, for example, in feather step for lady, that will be only a body rise. At the same time, men will use the foot rise too, so notice it's not always that we both use exactly the same type of rise. The fifth action is sway. We already agreed that sway is a body action, so we do not need our legs to sway our body. Now, what is sway? It's pretty much the change of the curvature of your body. Now, it's very important to understand that the curvature through the spine should be evenly made, which means I shouldn't just, for example, break my neck, or I shouldn't, for example, break my body. It should be a smooth curvature to the right or to the left. Of course, in most cases, sway comes with rotation. It's very rare that we have a separate sway. But as an exercise, we should be able to create just a sway sideways to the left and to the right. It's also very important to notice that your arms will only sway as much as we sway in your body or spine. It's a big mistake to sway only with your arms, but without involvement in the body. Please remember that in the end of the day, we do have to blend all those five actions to, together. Now, some of them happened in different time, some of them happened in the same time, and through every figure, we have to first of all know when do they happen, so the timing of the action, do we start this way on one, one end, two, two end, three, wherever that is. Do we have turn? How much turn do we have? How much rotation do we have? How big is the step? How much do we have to lower? All those things have to be done and understood before we even try to dance. A very good exercise is to literally write down on the scale to zero to five, how big is the step one in natural turn? How big is the third step in natural turn? Well, probably zero because it's just close to the feet and change the weight. Uh, how much sway do we have in natural turn? You will notice that not every figure will have the same value of turn, same value of progression, same value of rise, same value of lowering. So it's up to us to know what is the design of each figure before we even dance. Try to really crack it and be very curious about it and then you will see that in the studio it will be much easier to do those things. Using those five actions and blending them together will guarantee you togetherness, good balance, nice and vertical posture and generally I think happy face in the end of the practice. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember that if you have a comment 
please put them in the comment section below. We would love to see what your thoughts are. See you next time. Bye bye.